everyone. Welcome to our free live webinar of the month of October, representing Libra season. Today it is Friday, October 6th, and we are ending the week with a lot of volatile action all week. Um, it's been kind of a crazy ride. But we're here today to review that and take advantage of some trades because it looks like we have we'll have a major run up coming soon. So our flow may differ because I don't want to miss this <laughs> particular action on the chart right now. Um, so we're going to like keep our eye closely on it, see how it's building up, if it's going to go back up to the upside or um, which it should at some for the most part. But um, also see how it's forming to know if it's going to come back to the downside. So um because i know this is surprising just looking at the chart i'm kind of amazed by it myself so again we're going to do like quick fundamentals i also want to go over what is fibonacci and introduce like what that is because it is on the chart right now it has been helping me trade with all of the back and forth volatile moves that we've had this week um to capture short ones and to expect when it's coming back around um so this has been like a perfect week to talk about Fibonacci. So I'm really excited. And um, we're not going to bore you too much with like the details of it. But some of us are, you know, like the math nerded out. And that's totally fine. So I want to present that to you. So we're going to start off with mindset first. And then from there, we'll do a quick glance of the news. <laughs> and then we'll get into the course. And then we'll be ready by 9.30 to uh, jump into this future action. And then I will apply, I will, you'll kind of like see how we're doing uh, Fibonacci with a live trade that looks like it could be cooking for us. So I think it'll be exciting, right on par. So let's get into it. So today, for mindset, we have freedom of choice, freedom of choice. I have the freedom to choose, so I choose wisely because my decisions have a great impact on how I see myself and how I feel about myself. I own, accept, and express my feelings unreservedly and do not try to escape them with my own mind games. I have free will to choose how I respond to any situation. I choose to respond with wisdom, clarity, and understanding. All right, that's exactly what we're going to do in the market this morning when we apply these trades. That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we're not going to exercise through FOMO. We're not going to exercise through greed. We're going to calculate with clarity, wisdom that we have gained from our previous mistakes as traders to execute what we know, right? <laughs> All right, moving on. Next. A quick fundamental as to why the market looks like this. Let's start with Forex Factory. All right. So we look like this because this morning at 8.30, we had the average hourly earnings. We have the unemployment rate. And we have the non-farm employment change all coming out this morning. This is to conclude a week full of red folders uh, that led up to today. Right. And price has been doing some spazzy moves every day this week because of it. All right, so the unemployment rate is a little higher. We're concerned about that with it when it comes down to the Fed's um, hiking the interest rate. So this is what makes this day a little interesting and in trying to figure out what, what should we be preparing for. Uh, in, the, in the charts, we're going to just analyze the charts to kind of give an overview of that, saying it is the beginning of the month um, and close the first week of the beginning of the month. So CNBC... As we see here, just do a quick refresh because things change on us so quick. Um, the down is down 238 points. That's very significant. The S&P 500 down 44. And then NASDAQ down 190. So Dow futures dropped 200 points after strong job reports sends yields higher. So all of that combined, payroll increased by 336. Under this is a move I don't want to miss. That's why I put alert on. Hold on, <laughs> because, all right, so some of you are probably trading 
uh, this up. Let's just divert for a minute. This is why I'm like in this trade and we're going to do things. Maybe a little, a little, we're just going to flow with it. All right. It's Friday. We're going we're gonna to flow with Friday. Y'all go with that. Let's do that. <laughs> so we want to, uh, so based on my theory of kids and the fair value gap, right, we did leave some here. How fast it wants to come back up and retrace this, you know, um, it's up to the market, but it has a high probability of doing so because it fell so high, low. And we know that from where price is going to um, open, we want to retrace, we want to hold on, Ret we want to be able to retrace back into that gap, right? If we were trading the um, previous close to the previous open, right? And so this fell significantly. So we'll be trading it back up. On top of that, the chart clearly has a great large fair value gap running back up, right? So my future traders um, can ride this back up right? If you didn't get out when you noticed the turnaround, because I did at the round 30, 4304 in the candlestick pattern said, take profit and run. And I didn't come back into short because I needed to see how far down it was going to go down. And then I could just ride it back up. <clears throat> so with that being said, and we know we got to come back up to the gap, we can ride it up. And it looks like it's preparing for like a slingshot move to do so. But let's see what the 15 minute looks like. Let me take this away. All right. So this is a 15 minute. And if you want to wait for a little more confirmation, it's totally fine. 909. We can see how we do. This looks like a little W, right? That's coming up. And it looks like it's cooking to potentially come up and do this move, especially with the tweezer bottom coming down here. We have four minutes left on this candle, right? So we'll let this candle finish out because on the 15 minute, this is the candle that has left the kids in the fair value. Yeah, either way. This the fair value gap has been established. And then our next candle should come up for it. That's just what I see. <clears throat> now, how do you want to ride that with spy? So everybody can know what to do when it's action time, just in case I start talking over. <laughs> Let me acknowledge my traders. Uh Where are you, spy? All the way down here. Okay, so price close. Where's daily? Price close up here. Price open all the way down here. Ho, 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 ho. Like that. So that's like about a $3 gap on the way up. So you would be purchasing a call, right? And um, you will be purchasing at least at least three days out, depending on how fast you think this is gonna this is gonna move. Right? You can do more than that. You're gonna be in the money. And you're set to take profit to four. 24, 50-ish area. Whatever the premium is for that. And you're going to be done. <laughs> and you're not going to care what else happens to the candle for today. <laughs> That's going to be when you're going to be done. Right? Simple enough. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. But that's the move, all right? I think we're good. I'm looking at the chat. Any questions? <clears throat> For my traders to be ready. 
All right. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> and then we'll switch this to the side by side view. It's going to look crazy. Just bear with me. We want the smaller time frame right here. I don't know where my fair value gap indicator is at, but there we go. Uh, okay. And here is five. Okay. All right. Give me one second, y'all. Trading is how much time? At least three days. You can go out further. If you want. Because that fell pretty nicely. So we know we got to come up. And this is just what we know, right? So we trade what we know. Because we also know it could take off. <laughs> so if you have the conviction, take the conviction. This is a 15 minute. Now, how it looks on this Fibonacci right now with this long candle striking all the way through. I'm going to break this down all the way through. We will be coming back up at least to here, which is 42, 82. What is that on a 15 minute? That's that dip that's right in there. So you can take it to there if you want. Looks like it's coming up. Just bear with me, y'all. Trading and teaching at the same time <laughs> is a flex. All right. I mean, let me set take profit orders. It's 89. We'll sell. And 42, 89, but I think it actually has the strength to pop all the way back up. We'll keep an eye on it at 42, 82. Let me put an alert here. Nine. Okay, that's one. Make sure I'm looking at the right numbers. <laughs> and then one more. Okay. 
when your features mess around and shoot up and you miss it. All right, now I can now I can continue. <laughs> um we'll probably do most of this from the 15 minutes. This is a while. That's a lot of movement. So you might as well take it. Um, so yeah, overnight price did actually two moves that I thought it was gonna do. But let's let me let this rock. Let me get into the presentation and make it to the point. Allow you guys to ask, answer some questions while we look at the chart because it's always going to be better through application and go from there. So I appreciate y'all patience with um, me trying to get the work done too. All right. So let's see, what's the best way? Should I just... Go in present mode here. <clears throat> All right. Cool. So let me take off the closed captions. All right. So Fibba what? Fibonacci. Fibba, Fibba, Fibonacci. <laughs> what is Fibonacci? All right. So Fibonacci overall is uh, when it comes to the charts and trading, it's a retracement tool. And it's a retracement tool we can use to kind of guesstimate how far price will pull back to or blow through. And the reason why I said blow through because we're going to use candles to help us understand how the likelihood of it like blowing through uh, back through a certain level. Right. So that's what we overall are applying it to. Fibbing, we're going to go over what it is, the golden ratio, how to draw it, and entering and exiting. And we're kind of doing that entering and exiting thing right now as I went over the trade that I took to ride this back up, which aligns with some Fibonacci as well. And I'll show you once I'm done with this presentation. So what is Fibonacci? Overall, Fibonacci is a sequence that it's a sequence of numbers. Um, and this numbers are defined by like the first number plus the second number equals the third number and continues on and on from there. <clears throat> mm. It was discovered by mid medieval Italian Mathematician Leonardo Persano, you think it would be named after him. Fibonacci was his name, but no, it was not. Leonardo Persano was the one who figured it out. And this is a sequence that occurs in nature and everywhere, right? In the Nautilus shell, for those of you who are marine biologists, um, for you know the pattern in sunflower and so on and so forth. So this natural reoccurring sequence in nature applies to the natural flow of the stock market. And we're all in one, right? Because the stock market is ran by our feelings, our emotions, our like, it's us. So like, this is nature, nature is us. So, like there, there's definitely connections here, all right? And this is why I love Fibonacci. Um, okay, so you can use, as technical analysis traders, we can use this co to conduct an overall market analysis like I've kind of said before, and I'm demonstrating with this trade. So the advantages of using Fibonacci is you can predict future price movements. You can determine current and future support and resistance levels. You can set profit, target, and stop losses, and you can know where to put blind sell orders. So multiple things you can do to use to help Fibonacci execute your trades or stay in the trade long enough. Okay, so the golden ratio for the math nerds in the house has a fundamental mathematical structure, which appears prevalent throughout nature. Like I said, when the number in the Fibonacci series is divided by the number preceding it, the quotients themselves become a series that follows a fascinating pattern. So the one divided by one is one, two divided by one, two, three divided by one, 1 1.5, five divided by three, 1.6, and it just continues on and on. And so this uh, sequence is represented by 51610. That is the Greek symbol. And the formula for it is here. 
and the technical formula is here. Okay, just letting you guys know. All right, how we draw it on the chart? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to most likely use a daily time frame. Here are my day trades, though. I do use a two hour. So if you're day trading, I would recommend a two hour or 15 minute, not the daily. It depends on how you trade. If you're a swing trader, I would do daily. If you're a day trader, I would do less than daily. Just put it like that. Um, so the first step you're going to do is you're going to identify the overall trend, whether it's bullish or bearish. You're going to locate the, the highest point um, based on what you're looking at, the most recent high and the most recent low. Once you locate those two points, you're going to draw your Fibonacci, basically starting from one point, either high or low. If the trend is going downward, you're going to start with the first point going up and you're going to pull it downward to the low point and vice versa if the trend is going the other way, if it's going upwards. So it's a really, really simple concept. Don't overcomplicate it. High and low. And you're going to further identify those significant high and lows by the candlestick pattern juju that I'm here to bless you all with, okay? Which is seeing some significant candlestick patterns that will help you recognize when price is like, that's a more significant turnaround. So that's a more significant high and that's a more significant low. And pull it from there because that's going to give you your best Fibonacci drawings, right? So and everything's going to line up all beautifully. And then you're going to be able to take these short scalps and it's going to help people be able to get in and out and do the dance with the market. And once you become in flow, that's when you can hold longer. All right. So my recommended Fibonacci levels, which I did get these resources from books that I've read about Fibonacci. All right. I think for the first time, uh, people in the house, you should stay between zero and um, 100, right, percentage. And these are the levels that you will be inputting into the chart um, to define your levels. Most of those should already default for you. But just in case that they don't, you want to ensure that you have them and you can set uh, your settings in there to replicate these values. So your Fibonacci makes a nice um, even sequence along the chart of support and resistance lines for you. And then... If you were like, Randy, whatever, I can learn it all at once because I'm cool like that. I'm, I get you because, you know, you know, some of us are just geniuses like that. Here are the extended projectile levels projection where you can kind of figure out how far price is going to extend through if it breaks a zero or if it breaks 100%. Um, and it's really important that you have those as well because then you can see, okay, if this level has been beaten up, if we've beaten up the 0% for so long, we got to eventually break that level as well. And what level is it going to next? And does that next level correspond with some candlesticks that I know that I can take advantage of, right? Close some fair value gaps or close um, going up to order block. It usually aligns in some way. So it's really, really nice to have like a larger Fibonacci to go off of because price eventually breaks. It just is what it is. It'll trade in between, you know, the um, zero and 100 for a while. And then eventually it's going to break out to either side. And it will usually break out to align with the news, right, as well. So you have your eyes on all those things. You can kind of figure out, okay, it's time to do the dance. And that's what it's going to do, you know. So you just got to, like, go from there. Um, so those will help a lot. When entering and exiting, this is, again, where I say candlestick pattern is the number one thing on there because I, that's what I love to do. Um, but some of you may be more familiar with trend lines. Uh, order blocks is something I also love to do. RSI, not so much my favorite, but some traders love it. And volume and moving averages, right? These are all ways to help you confirm when you need to enter and exit your Fibonacci along with the Fibonacci itself, right? Depending on where it lines up with the candlesticks. You should be able to use that value line to get in and out of a trade as well. Okay. So, and then other Fibonacci instruments. So there's, I just use a retracement tool. It just comes with more support and resistance. So I can keep it simple. Not fancy. But for those of you who may be curious about fancifying your charts even more beautifully, you have Fibonacci arcs, fans, expansion, and channels that you can use and you can just kind of figure out whichever experiment with them. Those are the names of some and do what you will. 
So just as a review to like rules of charting Fibonacci, rule number one, identify the high and the low. Rule number two, chart the retracement tool. Boom, bam, high, low, whichever way it go, right? Rule three, observe the historic data. So look at how it is moving across that Fibonacci and if certain clusters, what we call uh, order blocks, are aligning with certain key levels like the 50% and the 38 and bouncing off of those levels when you drive Fibonacci. That's what you want. That's what you want. So it should be making sense, right? And then number four, always find confirmation in some way, shape, or form that you like. I like candlestick patterns to confirm your entry before uh, taking the trade, right? So that's the overall basis of Fibonacci. We got two minutes to the bell ring, less than two minutes to the bell ring. So this is exciting to see how this is struggling to come back up. Um, but it looks like it may do the doggone dance. And so, yeah, we're going to switch it to the charts. So you can see how my previous Fibonacci, along with some previous lines, because I've um, the way I chart, you can use previous levels of support and resistance as new levels of support and resistance and vice versa, blah, 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 blah. So we're just going to apply everything that I just said to this particular chart move that's happening right now. So excited. This is a great Friday. Yay. <laughs> so we can do this together, especially for those of us who need that group effort. Kumbaya, let's hold hands. Right, we're gonna hold hands and we're gonna get this and we're gonna do this, okay? All right, this is where you're gonna take your leap of faith because you have everybody here for you. And we're gonna stir the pot together and all of our energy is gonna combine from the different areas that we are. And we're gonna do this trade, <laughs> okay? So, and then we're gonna figure out retracements and moving it back around and all this other stuff, right? So this is what was happening on the five minutes. So let me... Take off this, switch back gears. Do y'all have any questions in this last minute? Last few seconds. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let's switch back over here. Okay. So this is a five minute because I was like, I'm talking, but y'all can't see it yet. All right, here we go. So any questions on the Fibonacci to start with that was confusing that I can clear up, that may be cleared up when I just go through it as well. But here's a gap move. So I don't want to miss those who want the gap move either, right? So if we come over to... Bye. So since it ran up a bit, it opened here, here, right, which is bouncing back off this gap. It is struggling. And then from the future perspective of my, this is just a large kid's fair value gap and it's crossed multiple time frames. Yeah. So that, you know, and, um, so it's probably going to do this move. <laughs> Just, yeah. Now, again, coming into Fibonacci. So with my Fibonacci, I drew, let's come back to the larger time frame here. And let's kind of recap what I did. Because I know it's like lines on top of lines right now. But what I did is I came to the two hour because it was last night. Uh, once we, after we made this drop and started to come back up, um, I drew going bottom to top, right? Because we had like a little upward trend, right? And then all of this happened later in the afternoon. So this was like, you know, midday. And then all of this happened in between that. So things dipped back down because I was expecting price to potentially come back to its 50. And it did after hitting its zero. So it was up there right? It hit, hit its 50. My red line is my 50%. Always comes back to the 50. Came back up, tried to hit it again and got rejected this morning. That's what made me get out because it was really turning around. 
Uh, and I saw it on the 15 minute. So I got out of my up tray because it didn't look like it wanted to break up yet. So I was like, okay, you're going to do a pull back down move, which you did back down to your 50 again, making a series of like bumps, right? And so you're coming all the way through though this morning with the news, you came all the way through. And when you come all the way through in one sweep, you're definitely bound to retrace back up um, because it's just too much movement. Right. So came all the way down to the 78 percent, basically almost coming down to the 100 percent in one swoop. So it's going to definitely bounce. Right. And after this move, it can continue to come back down. OK, it's just going to do a retracement. We want to get out. And if it chooses to still push down for the day, it has every right. Just and just know that. Right. So. You know, it's pulling back up because it was just a massive fall down. And again, I'm looking to see once it gets. So right now it's fighting this wick back here at the 4276. Once it breaks through there, which I just I kind of have a feeling. But if it doesn't, I'll be ready to to get out. And this is where I'm going to watch it from the 15 minute, from the five minute to see exactly what is it going to do. Does it have the strength to finish it? based off of the data that came in, based on how we feel about it, all of that jazz. And then from there, do we continue up or do we come back down, right? So we'll just have to see the candlesticks. I wouldn't uh, wait through it. <laughs> That's just me on how I would day trade to get into the day trade flow, right? So I think you still have time to catch it with SPY. So let's come back over here. It's coming up though. So I will do, I can do a quick one. Let me see. I can get away with October 9th, just through the weekend. And come in to the 421 call. And then ride it to 424. Um, I'm gonna just take 424 even in case it starts acting funny. Because you never know when it just gets stopped short. Price just does that, okay? So you can account for that in your trading. <clears throat> and so we will watch and see so it's at it's 50 right based on my Fibonacci right and that's where it's chomping up at right at the 50 so we could, it could come back down a bit before coming back up but that's where it's getting held up at so you want to have a little bit of time for it to get through. And then this is where you can start to further master your candlestick reading patterns and see how like, okay, is it staying up? Is it staying down? Am I getting a reversal pattern? Like what is going on? Exercise a bit of patience to wait for it, to see it before you just press the button. I'm always like, push the button, but also be careful not to push the button, <laughs> right? So it's it's a who it's mindset, y'all. It's and the more you can put yourself in a zenful space, the easier it will be coming to the trade desk. This is why I'm playing like spa music and stuff when y'all come in here. So. <clears throat> we'll pull it up. 
pullback is expected. So tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms can also make you feel like, okay, I got to get out, <laughs> right? But price, remember price does these as fake outs too. <clears throat> so you really need to pay attention to, is it going to come down and break this neckline? You might break it, break it. Because what it can do is it can come down back to here. The smaller fair value gap, but stay up above here to then finish it up. There's more than one way this can work. This is where you do need to have a bit of patience because you see that there's fair value gaps here. You know the price can take its time to ride up. Hmm. And then you also know it's in between the 50, so it's going to stall. You see all these different confluences. And then you see where it was previously my weekly support, order block, right? My daily uh, support zone entry, right? These are all lines that I kept from earlier this week. I haven't changed anything. The only thing I changed was the Fibonacci direction. Once I got a new swing high and a new swing low. <clears throat> it could be doing a larger W. And now you got multiple kids left in this, so there's that theory of like it may take some time to come back up as well. Now here's the scary part, because sometimes I've seen it dip pretty low back down here, and I ain't gonna lie, it can make you feel like, oh my goodness, is this the right move? Um, so this is where you would either, if you still have the conviction, it's gonna come up. You can either double down on a position as it comes back down. Um, and work on that psychology piece. <laughs> and then you come back out to the two hour just to confirm, like you have 19 minutes left on it. So is my next candle going to come up or is my next candle going to like come down? And so I can see it coming up, back up through here a bit, and then coming back down uh, throughout the day. It doesn't have to stay up. But I do think it will want to take out this gap. And of course, we could be wrong and be like, I don't know, I'm just going to leave the gap and <laughs> just fall down all day. But that's a pretty big fair value gap. <clears throat> Look at the alert there. Or if it's going to do a bounce move, let me stay up. Do, do, do. And if not, we're going to get out and we'll come down. Hmm. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? Good morning. <laughs> I know I feel like I jumped right in there, but I just knew this move was coming and I felt like a lot of y'all did. <laughs> so so what, what side were you on? Or were you on both sides? 
you know. So I know today's flow was a little bit different. Usually I take my time and then we talk about the news a little bit more and blah, blah, blah. But let's like, yeah, but this move coming up, right? Now I don't want to miss this move. Let's just be real. <laughs> like, let's just be real. Um, Y'all here to take make the move? Are y'all here to look at the look at the move? I'm here to take the move. Looking at the move is pretty too. But I'd rather look at it and take it at the same time if I can help it. Okay. And I can just sit back, wait for a signal to say, run. <laughs> just, just run. I hope y'all quiet because y'all focus on this trade. That's what I hope. <laughs> y'all are real quiet. Which is a good thing. Because you got to decide what you want to do based on what you see. And if it's best to get out and then get back in because you feel like you want to make that little bit of money and then turn around, like depending on where you got in at, because this is where I got in, so I'm still a little profitable. Um, or you're like, no, you know, I'm going to hold it through. The like side bleeding is fine. Um, I have the conviction that it's going to come up. This is like the, we're looking at the three minute chart, right? So here's the five minute chart and here's the 15 minute, right? So, <clears throat> um, you know, is this 15 minute tweezer bottom strong enough? We're just having a pullback candle. Next couple candles is going to be up more than down. Like, or we just turn it around up here. What do I want to do? How long can I wait? <laughs> so all the things is just real. This is just real. So. You know. Nine forty-five. It's only fifteen minutes in the market. This is what I chose to do on Friday morning. <laughs> and my blood pressure all high. Right. Something like that. All right, I'm going to play some music because we're just sitting here watching it. This is how you get fancy with it. Let me do some. Just let it keep going. See what happens. <clears throat> Here is at 4282 because you would have just broke through that side. And see how the pullback's gonna look. So forty two eighty two, you see it, it already pulled it back on forty two seventy six. So now let's see, are you gonna make a new high? And just keep going up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
And then actually, let me take one more look at Borax Factory before I play this music and let this rock until I feel like it's going to turn around. All I can do is wait. Mm, not giving me the vibe just yet. Three minutes kind of wonky. Three minutes can give you too much noise. That's the shoulder. That's the shoulder. I see that. But this is across every time frame. Like, just come on. Just don't. Except for the two hour, which I wish it was on the two hour. <laughs> that would make it feel like it's a little longer lived. We got 11 minutes. Let's see what it's going to do in 11 minutes. And where the two hour candle wants to really close. Great. Is there anything else? 12 p.m. FOMC member Waller speaks. All right, and what does Benzinga say? Let's just, let's finish out where we started. Since <laughs> I kind of hopped all over the place. Um, S&P, NASDAQ, futures climb ahead, the key job sale analysts. Okay, so now if we refresh it, since the data came out, U.S. labor market strength continues. September non-farm payroll source of 336,000, far exceeding estimates. Hmm. We can do one of those. Volatile wick moves, long wick, long candle, depending on how it wants to pull back up. My expectations for hiring slow down. Yeah. All right. I want to glance at it. So, nine minutes. What do I want to do? Well, it's a pretty, let me see. Let me go to SPY. I got all these drawings on here, which I don't have on SPY. All right. So daily. Okay. So my blue lines are my gap. From where it closed yesterday to where it opened this morning. Right. So this is the gap we're looking for it to fill. The purple lines is the weekly gap that it already whipped into pretty far down. So because it's the weekly, it's kind of like, well, where are you trying to really stop for the week based on the candle how far is the retracement up going to be right so if it comes back up to this is using spy if it comes back up to 424 you know um it's up there it's a pretty significant bounce off this weekly gap which wouldn't be surprising because it is a weekly gap right so that could be likely based on this gap. And if it wants to leave it and not worry about it, then it'll do so. But it looks like from the spy perspective as well that it would like to try to come back up. Now, if it starts to really come down, like break past here, then, you know, maybe in the opposite direction for puts. Country you can flip and it's like and what it could do is come down further here and wick it and do something like that and still come back up i've done it i've seen it do some tricky stuff like you really have to push through your conviction sometimes because the retracement could just go deeper than you think um then it's like when do you when do you cut it right <laughs> so so yeah 
We shall see. Seven minutes left over here. All we can do is see. What love we want to break. But the 15 minutes is going to be your best indicator. So you won't have too much noise like faking you out because um that's what the the five minute and the three minute can often do. Give you a lot of noise and make you really second guess your analysis. All right. Forty two fifty five. Come back to it. I see what you mean, Tanana. Well, I just see if it goes back to forty two fifty five. Yeah, because I can see it too. And then come back down here and then come back up through to take the uh fair value gap. I agree. And my previous daily fair value gap area close was 42.53. So that's right below. I kind of moved it, but it's right below the close of this smaller fair value gap here on the five minute. That's if it wants to come back for an hour or what, but it could do that. It could not. I just. And it's like right in alignment with the Fibonacci right now, which is perfect. So. So we watching the, watch the 15 minute spy against the five minute futures. See how it does. Long straddles. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting both sides. I had a feeling. I was just waiting on her to say it. <laughs> so, totally fine. Because it can go either way. And then she also doesn't like to gas back up either. So I get it. Totally get it. Let's see. All right. I'm going to play some music. We're going to watch this happen.
All right, how y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Okay, everybody okay? So, the question is with this candle, I can see it's pulling down into here as well before coming back up. I would assume you want to get rid of some of this liquidity, but we'll see if it wants to put a tail on this end. Because that's essentially what we're looking at since the two hour candle has now started on the futures. Right. And it's just leaving it this way. But it's two hours, so it can't come back up the other way. <laughs> so it's just like, which way, what does it want to, what does it want to do? um in order to fill this void of liquidity and it wicked in here one yeah this is a two hour one two three, four. <laughs> it's like, I need the candle to stay down there long enough to close it off.
And all week, right? It's been doing these, excuse me, y'all. These like run ups, run downs, run back, like retracing damn near the whole candle. So we'll just have to see if it's going to continue that trend today and close up some of this or just run to the downside and just fall. And I'm still just kind of waiting because. I've just seen the chart do some interesting things <laughs> that, that you not quite expect. And you'd be like, oh man, if I would have just waited. So you think it's going to break through? It tends <laughs> right through the bottom. <laughs> I get what you're saying. 15 minutes. Flesh down to where? Here? Yeah. 42.32. And then rise back. Cut it before it does it and then flip it back around. You gotta be quick like that, y'all. But I've also seen it like hold right here and then you make like a W and come back up. I'm trying to see if I'm not wishful thinking based on what I know of the candlesticks. Because that means this candle would be with an hour and 52 minutes on here. I don't have hopeful thinking. All right. Forty-two. Where will we stop? Going down to this wick. Where is that? It's coming down for the rest of this candle. Okay, I see this way to finish out the bottom of this candle. That would be forty-two thirty-two. That's the way we're going, 42, 32. Okay. I can see that. And then we, uh, but if we break it, then we're going down, down. I agree. Because this is like a strong M pattern at that point. That's just pushing through. If it doesn't give a pullback. If this candle doesn't pull back up into here more than it won't be. But this is a two hour. So it's like, do you wait for that conviction or you flip positions? Especially when you see what I say, multiple kids and bodies before it meets the break line. So if you're in on the upside, you have some profit or small loss, uh, <clears throat> manage it and then come back down and let it like fall down. And there's a three minute. And that's a pretty steady pull down. And so that means it's coming for you. Hit the 50, 
doing a strong pullback at least down to the 1%. And that would align with that bottom of that candle pretty much. So all in alignment. some changes. Mm -hmm. Get back in on another turnaround signal. Let's see. That's the option too. This is why I do like playing the futures. Makes it real easy to keep it tight and manage your trades. All right. So we can shoot back up here. I can get in cheaper. Let's see what it wants to do. I'll comp what I have because I got in low. And I'll get back in to go back up if it's going to give me the move I wanted to. So we have three minutes left on this whoop, on this 15 minute chart on ES. And how this candle closes matters a lot. So it's so a five minute. It came down to fill this fair value gap that me and Tanza was talking about. So now it's going to pull back up a bit. The question is how much and like, is it going to sit here? And this is going to be a whole daily struggle of coming back around because it can do that too. Or is it going to break down? So this is kind of like where we're looking at candlestick patterns to see that. Because on the 15 minute, it doesn't necessarily look like a turnaround. Just yet. Two minutes left is two minutes left on the candle. Like you just have to accept it. I'm saying, okay. Yeah, this is a good support level. I'm just trying to. It's just going to take, it's just going to take, it could be an all day thing. I'm right there with you, Tanza, right there with you. All this is daily support, daily fair value got closed daily, <laughs> like it is. Stuck right here, man. This is like perfect for Fibonacci. Trust me. I think I can buy that Because at least if it dips down lower, it's better than what it was. We want to see how this level holds. giving me all day vibes. Let's see, level. 
This is it's just a hard read right now. I'm trying. See that part where we get the come on. Let's see what you want to do. Okay, so you started a new candle there. But Come on, support. Yeah, the five minutes don't give me too much noise. <laughs> Be patient on the 15 minute. One, two, three, four candles. Can be a squeeze pattern. It could be a few different things. We got to make some wick on the other side, I would assume. All right. Y'all want to go fishing for the rest of the market and just see what's happening. Let me put an alert. Back over here before I do that. Go ahead, Kim. Can you look at Costco? My alarm went off a couple times. Costco. I really want to do some debit spreads, but I can't do any. I got to figure out what's going on with, with um, fingers. So I guess I got to have more money in there. So Costco's tanking. And just tanking. <laughs> so well, what are you thinking? Well, I wanted to do a call, a long-term call and a long-term debit. I mean, a long-term um, call and a long-term put, but I think it's going to go down first to the mm -hmm. next um, support line, but I'm not sure because it keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm just not sure yet. Um, Next week, let's actually, let's take a minute and look at next week's Forex Factory because... For whatever today, let today kind of happen and then come back in next week when things are trying to like cool off a little bit from this week. So we have no red folders Monday, no red folders Tuesday. And then we have um, red folders on Wednesday and Thursday and then Friday. But consumer sentiment kind of not doing too much usually. So I would say most of the focus on Wednesday and Thursday. So with that significant drop and seeing if it wants to either drop more uh, before getting into like a long-term position, wait until Monday to see that, wouldn't be a bad idea if long-term was your goal. Um, Cause then you can either ride this down further and know it, or it, you know, uh, come back up on you after this drop. And then it's starting to try to retrace some in the, in this candle up here, so you can get a better uh, rate. Because you know, all can't. I mean, it, all candles going to try to make two wicks, one on each side. So uh, this is today's candle drop. So you need something to create, either leave a fair value gap or not. But you need something to happen to the upside. It doesn't matter how much, and then you'll be able to tell that once this candle stops dropping. <laughs> so yeah from Costco was there any other ticker that you want to look at no I'm just looking at that spy that's the only one that went off I'm also looking at QQQ to buy for long term though okay QQQ
So this is QQQ daily with the same gap that's trying to come back up a little bit here. Um, yeah. Which way? This is so choppy. I'm <laughs> just kind of like, um, hold it which way though for QQQ? Do you want to hold it going for a buy or for sell with the way this chart looks? I'm going to get to my QQQ chart <laughs> so I can look at it. I can tell you what I was thinking. And as a fiduciary, we do better when our clients do better. Where's my QQQ chart at? 759 If your retirement portfolio is $500,000 or more, call us today. You don't have it coming to you unless you plan for it. Call 1 800 759 4477. Our stock's staying low. Oh, the other one. For pre emerging markets. Not to mention the integration of cloud and their service functionalities. And of course, synergy. Ever wonder where people with all the answers get all the answers? Ask Market, accountants and advisors. The volume. So it filled a gap. And I was looking to buy. Is that cute? Mm -hmm. No, that's SPX. Sorry. Let me get to my QQQ. What's what going on with my trading? Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to come down to like 351. I'm thinking it's going to come down to 351. And then I was going to get in then for a long term. Okay. 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 I see. It's got a gap. Of, it's got a gap. Above from 364.54, I mean 360.80 to 364.54. So I figure if I buy two or three months out, once it gets down to the three, like three between 351, 352, I was going to do a buy. I, mean, I was on a 10 minute. I need to get on a 15 minute. <laughs> Well, I see the zone from the daily. Yep. It's a um it's a couple uh order blocks down there at 351 and 352. Yes. On a 15-minute. So I'm thinking about that. Remember it came in by below 20,0. I just thought it was wrong. What does that mean? Wait, wait, wait. I'll get there, David. I'll get there. I'll try to explain. And that's not a revision. Other than that, I'm really focusing on SPY because eventually I want to get into SPX. But SPX is expensive, so I definitely have to be able to get spreads for that. Verticals. Dev spreads. Yeah. Or um, credit spreads, either or. I just have to figure that out. I might have to do it on my Fidelity account. So there's the same gap play <clears throat> on SBX. Um, with some chump, with some significant change in there. So leveling up to SPX is definitely a goal. Twenty-three handles and done. Right, so. And start with SPY and then level up to SPX and kind of do the thing. This is a two hour. And here is a pullback to take out some of this liquidity. You got to eat some of it, some of it, somewhere, something, something, somewhere, something. <laughs> How far up it wants to eat it. I mean, ideally, I would want it to go all the way back, but if it doesn't, it'll probably stop right at that 42 or 82 that I said. So that's where it's dipping down. And that's where it probably hit some resistance before it 
saying, okay, what's well, the next candle going to do? Is the next candle going to leave kids or something like that? But we'll see if even 4276 gives it some hindrance. Okay, here we go. Coming back up. I want you to use get to 4289. Yeah, that support just held it, held it there. For now, four minutes left on the candle, and this candle's staying up pretty strong. Let's see if you can give me just a little bit wick higher than this other wick. I think it would be good to go for the gold on it. And of course, I'm still holding spy. This price continues up. Sorry, I got distracted. Now cat decides it wants to fall down. <laughs> oh, play the chart that you're in. There's cat. It's pulling back up a bit, though. There we go. Pull back. Strong falls come with strong pullbacks. Come on, push up there, push up there. It's just a waiting game, y'all. Just a waiting game. Go ahead, Cam, you had your hand up or was that from earlier and I didn't move your hand? Feeling it was from earlier. Oh, I just didn't lower it from the yeah, last. Yeah, I didn't lower it either. <laughs> I had a feeling. All right. I drank a lot of tea this morning, so I'm going to take another potty break <laughs> and I'll be back.
All right. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Y'all still holding? I hope y'all still holding. <laughs> I hope y'all still holding. Um, so it's fighting with the 4282, like I called it to be doing. So now we're just going to dissect a little further and see how the candles look to see what the pullback looks like. So we can hold through and say that it continues to go up. Right? 4289. Some of y'all could be taking it up to 4293. Then from there, hold. See what the rest of today's direction wants to be if it wants to continue up to that 4313 that I call. Because I do believe it needs to come back up that way. It's just it's just doing pullbacks like crazy. It's a while it's a week. A lot of wick action. So um it's up to you. I'm gonna pause. We'll take take a look at what how the candles are gonna be breathing and then either trade a retracement or wait for the retracement and then trade the longer way up once I have conviction of which way it's going. Um that's how I am going to play the rest of this day. Keep coming. This is a three minute time frame. So we will see turn around fairly soon. And based on where it's at and within this gap, I do think it's gonna finish it. Um, Based on the way it pulled back already and blew back up, I can get an idea of where its next uh, support level that's going to create is going to be at the least the depth of it, which would be right here where it broke up. So right, right past here. This is also the largest gap between fair value gaps. So it will probably get held up a little bit there. Um, in between these areas and then it'll be a question of if there's wicks left in this floor for a value gap and things like that but this is a three minutes so we'll take that with caution um so looking at it from the five minute perspective right that level is right between here we have two fair value gaps coming to 15 minute it looks like this which it also makes me recognize that it's probably just going to get this over with um so i hope I really do hope some of you guys took this gap up train. I know it was nerve wracking. You guys heard me get out and get back in, right? At a level just in case, which is totally fine. But I did get back in. <laughs> Make that caveat that I did get back in. Um, once you saw the breakaway candle happen. So that would have been fine. You would have caught most of the move anyway. Uh, so yes. So it pushed up here. Um, and the, the, the fair value gap close is actually 42.91. So I am leaving a few dollars on the table, um, by taking the 42.89, just cause I see these wicks. This was also a previous gap. So just in case it started acting real funny, like an order doesn't, uh, trigger because it like went through there too fast. I am totally okay with that level. Um, by all means, you can get it filled all the way up. It will do that. But just keep in mind, if it does wick, you may have to sit through a little bit more of a pullback before it clips it and gets you out. Um, those are just all things to consider. Uh, but it will, should do it. It's just a matter of your patience, tolerance, and things like that. Like, it's just individual trader at that point. So uh here's a two hour coming all the way back up you know so coming back up to the 4293 is coming all the way back for it this is the wick that is protruding down on the two hour that's 4289 is the reason why i'm saying that <laughs> okay there's some wicks down don't be playing no games and if it wants to leave a small fair, fair value gap it can right so um that would be 
4289 for me as you see it's just like right there at that level right there at that wick and it's a little even further down from that so yeah because i don't play no games i just don't play when it comes to the wick before the long candle it does it every time it like just runs out of steam so that's about as far as up as i think it will go uh quickly and then the rest of it you're gonna have to wait on the rest of the day or or it may take a whole nother day i don't know um so I'm good with that. So just kind of sit here and see how the rest of these candles react. One, two, three, four. You can give me eight. It may take us all the way until 11 o'clock to do this. Um, and hit that other algorithm to pop it up there. That will let 10, 55, 11. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> algorithm to pop it up there and then be done and then we'll get a pullback for sure and now we're tipping into the afternoon session which I kind of was Friday I kind of want to be like peace out I bought a new beach tent so I kind of want to hit the beach this weekend before um you know before that weather starts to really change on us here in Florida and the water's just a little too cool I don't like it too hot but you know weather's been looking pretty decent so I think it's a beach day for all my coastal people y'all know what I mean so here we go um almost there Come on, you're so close. $42.89, $3. Have a nice picnic on the beach. <laughs> Give me my picnic money. <laughs> like, the things that we say, man, I'm, I'm telling you, you are not alone in your psychosis when it comes to talking to the charts. Okay, this is probably a part of my father coming out where my father yells at the TV during NFL season, every NFL game. He's just, come on, da -da -da, all this stuff. And um, so at least I applied to making money. He ain't even playing fantasy football for him to be making all that damn noise. I ain't gonna lie. Like, come on. Oh, at least this is profitable noise, right? It's really justifiable that way. So, but talking to the screens, you know, you are not alone if you are one of those people. Okay, you are not. We're almost to the close. We're at those wicks down here. Let's see if my spy order. I'm gonna push my spy the distance to so close, close. Um, Chama, you are so close. The 15 minute look like we got three minutes left. Okay. This is what the three minute looks like. Not really a reversal yet. Two dollars. Just give me two dollars. Oh, come on. Almost there, guys. We're moving at flow. No, that's a 23% too. So you see how that blue Fibonacci line is a 23% Fibonacci? So it doing that right there also gives me explanation of why it's doing that. Right on that money. That was like beautifully done. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to turn around just yet. You still got two minutes left on this candle. Um... But it is showing the amount of resistance that we're getting at this level, right? I still believe it can have the force to go a little beyond this line and hit my target. Uh, but taking profit and running is a strategy. <laughs> if it doesn't want to do the move, that is a hell of a pullback. But this is a 15 minute and um I want to believe my higher time frame that it's going to do this move. 
so I'm going to be patient as it pulls back a bit to then continue back up uh, and look and look at it and see what the candles really do for me. I know I could be dipping into profits and stuff like that. But um, this is where you would like take profit on one contract and hold another, like have two positions in it. Because I don't have two positions, this is where you would just have to make a conscious decision on you getting out or holding it through or how you want to execute it um, and being consistent with that. Because taking profit and running from where you are and leaving the money on the table out of fear is okay as long as you consistently do that when you see a consistent candlestick pattern and it's just consistent. Consistent, consistent, consistent is the message I'm trying to get in here today. So um, I'm going to, you know, look at the candlesticks closely to see if it's really turning around on me or if it's just giving me some play noise because you're so, so close. And I'm not even asking for the whole fair value gap at this point. So you might as well just give me what, what I want. But, you know, um, you know, things can do whatever they want to do. But they're going to pull back some. They're going to try to take out liquidity. So like this candle came down. We're on a five minute enough to close out this wick. So there's not an additional, you know, fair value gap left, right? So we we know that that most likely it doesn't want to leave a fair value gap. Doesn't mean it will. It it definitely can and will. But always expect that it may not want to. And if I can get it over with sooner, then I'd rather get it over with sooner than later, right? So. We're just at this level and the peak peak is coming back up through here. And that's the level that I'm not too convinced that it's going to like pierce through. I think it will take a lot of the rest of the day to do that part. Um, but we'll see. We will see. So this is the new 15 minute candle it just came online and it's giving us some pullback. Of course, what did I say? It's going to want to take out some of this if it can. Um, it can come up first and then come back and take it out. It does. It depends on how it wants to, um, the type of candle it wants to be. I can't control what it wants to be. I just support what it wants to be. We're a supporter. So who they are, including the candlesticks, okay? And we judge to these candlesticks, right? They come back and come like with you with the wrong type of revenge. Um, so, yeah. Where is 42? It came up to 42.88. Really? You're not going to give me 42.89? 42.82. 42.83. This is where it was. Missed the accident to leave the line. Um, we'll make it pink. Like this. All right. <clears throat> so it's pushing back. It's giving me, uh, you know, a little bit of a evening star pattern. But it ain't over till it's over. We need this last candle to make up its mind. Three minutes. We're on a five minute. Okay, this is what the three minute looks like. The three minute does give us a bit of a turnaround pattern but it is a three minute so we want to just be patient um we have a nice rejection from the bottom it can come back and revisit this area if it does we can kind of move this line down now uh to give us a new zone to look at especially if we come back out to the five minute we see that it's back all the way back down here to this uh lower fair value gap and it doesn't really have to want to come back for that just yet and then on the but on the 15 minute, you see that it is coming back down to at least that level is 50% of the prior candle. It is also taking away some of the liquidity that is already there um, to shorten that distance of that fair value gap. So keep that in mind that it, since it's still working, we have 12 minutes, it can totally do that and still come back up or stay in the middle or do some type of move, just letting you know. That's just the reality of the game. There go my order fills. There goes one, two, three, four. All right. One, come, don't leave me hanging. I got one more. <laughs>
just I got one more. I push the 50 cents. There it goes. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, you know, again, it's probably still coming up, but that's the close of that right on time with 10 minutes to spare. And this is like a perfectly in sync Friday live free webinar. So if you missed it, you can catch it on YouTube. I know there's a lot of quiet parts, but that's trading. I can't help how long it takes for the move to happen. All I can do is point you to the move and tell you how to take advantage of the move based on the candlestick pattern. Tans like, come on. Like for real though, it's um, it's just that that simple. And we've been doing this crazy volatile down, up, down, up ridiculously all this week. And the Fibonacci's would help me come through with this because it came down past the 50, it's moving back up. It's really just trading along the Fibonacci and um, my previous zones down here from like weekly gaps to weekly fair value gaps or daily fair value gaps and just marking the open and the close. I'm not doing anything else but marking open and close the fair value gaps on the weekly and the daily level as like my key support and resistance. And then coming in with Fibonacci when things are choppy. And that's it. So, <laughs> yeah, I know it was quiet, but it worked out, which I'm because it, it helped us push patience. Okay. Because this is exactly how it is. We can't control anything. Like, price really took a turn, made you feel like you wanted to get out, had to look and you just had to assess everything going on in your brain. So, you got to see it happen live and in action with us today along with learning and understanding how to use the Fibonacci in your favor. So if you don't have any other questions or comments, you know, I can let you guys go. Go ahead, Kim. Hey, can you, are you on spy? Cause I was waiting to get out at 424. Yes, I just got out my order filled at 424. Uh, I had set it for like around 420. I did 424 flat. Oh, I was waiting I set for an order for that because I know how it gets trippy by those wicks. Oh, okay. Well, I got to October the 17th. I'm looking for 424.50. I'm a hold. Okay. It may do it today. It may do it. So just hold. Because it probably should finish out. Wicking yeah. I knew that it would do a pullback at that 4289 level. I just knew that from, it's on my two hour, right? Mm -hmm. Here's my wick. You know, and here's my wick. And there, there it is. Let me zoom in. Yeah. Okay. There it is. I knew. I thought you was trading futures. You trading SPY. Which one you trading today? I did both. I did. Oh, okay. I did. I actually did the micro. I did two contracts in the micro. I did the mini BS and I did spy all just now. Oh, girl, you girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do all that. That's a lot. The goal was two thousand dollars a day. Huh? So the goal is two thousand dollars a day. Oh, okay. So. Uh, once you know the move, you see the move, you scale the move. Yeah, and I should have right, got out of the pit. It's a little bit I'm of put, but I should have got out of from the West Coast. <laughs> so, and you're holding them to win, um, Tanza. What's the exit for the call? Forty-two fifty-eight SPX, which would be that forty-two ninety. Let me go to SPX. It aligns. I just got. I just got out where I know price starts to stall. That's all I did. Because then, what you can do, what I could do right now, is I can get back in for the pullback and then get back up for the rest of it, and then do three trades, and I'll still have all that done by eleven o'clock. Because the goal is to finish it. And so this is why Tanta plays both sides and she's in like, she's doing it with options, but she's doing the same thing. Like, okay, now I'm going to double down and go this way and buy more puts because now price is coming down. Oh, I made profits on these puts. Now I sell here and while price come back up, I get more calls. And then those make money. And then she just stays profitable, but always holding both sides. I see you, Tanta. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
So SPX, that's the close right there. 4258. That's what she says. That's where my line is. It's I'm coming up so like full transparency. Like I'm averaging like sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred. I think my nerves are still like underlying nerves of like okay, two thousand dollars a day. <laughs> like Randy, you could do two thousand dollars a day, and so like I do like a I do like a small hesitation move per day <laughs> to keep me from that. To, it's a whole psychology thing, y'all, to keep me from the two grand a day. So I keep coming up short like five hundred dollars. Swear to swear to you. Like that's that's the reality. Um, it's still not a bad like trajectory to be going in, right? Fifteen hundred dollars a day. That's a, not a problem. But the goal is two thousand, and this is just me being transparent on how your mindset has to go and grow for you on this course. So as soon as I get past this little hump, then I'll comfortably make in two thousand, and then I'll be like, okay, now it's five thousand dollars a day, and I'll probably have to do this reconditioning again, but maybe with a overcome it faster right because I overcame it the first time so that's like this is like Tansa know about this part too she should because she went in the game so it like takes this like okay I can leverage more now I can leverage more now in like getting comfortable with each step of that to maintain consistency in what you're doing right so I'm so close. Y'all gonna see me do a happy dance when I get there. <laughs> well, congratulations. Again, you just keep getting better and better. So you are millions of miles ahead of where you were just a few months ago. Yeah. Thank you, Tondra. Since you've been yeah. right here with me from across the bay. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming back. I, I figured while I'm working, I'm like, I might as well build up, save my money and build up my little account. <laughs> so so were you able to take advantage of some of this future stuff how did it go for you last night because it dipped down and ran back up this morning that's when I got out I saw the reversal so it looks like sleeping is good for my psychology because <laughs> if I had to be watching I'd be like, <laughs> like, Stop this. but because I slept through it I just left it alone and it did the dang thing. And and like I said, six, I said 6.30, but it actually, when I look back and look, it filled at like 6.13 this morning. So yeah, I was out walking. Was, no, I think I was taking my shower and getting ready for work at that it time. It feel good, don't it? It does. I'm like, this is what really is talking about waking up to money. And it did more than five. I think I took more than, I think it was 10, 11, 12, almost 13 handles. That was, yeah. You know, and that was on the that was on the um the micro. So imagine if I had to, now if if it was in the mini, I don't know if my I listen, sleep probably wouldn't even help my psychology, but because it was in the in the micro, I was like shut <laughs> off. It's gonna be way. You know, but anyway, so yeah, when I saw the drop, because I woke up like three o'clock and I'm like, ooh, the market's down. I'm like, okay, turn it off, keep on walking away. <laughs> But keep yeah. doing that with because that's what got my confidence up. I was doing it with the micro, and the mm -hmm. micro was easier because it's like twenty. But if you, I just kept doing it, and it was like, well, I'm averaging like you know two hundred dollars a week just with the micro. Nice, right? Okay. You do, you doing that enough, right? Keep doing that, and then your confidence will build up, and you wanna and you're just gonna go, okay, let me just take the EF because then that that twenty dollars is two hundred dollars, right? That eighty dollars is eight hundred dollars, right? <laughs> so, and like I, said, I just use ten, so I'm like, I'm like, okay, so it gapped down. It was only a dollar, but it still gapped down. So it's supposed to, you know, <laughs> that's I'm like, I don't know what the rules are. There's, is there a rule when it's barely a gap? <laughs> you know, it still so, does it though. It did go back up. You know, it kind of like I, said, I watch it stutter for two hours. Good lord, to wait for it to just do something. Yeah. It's forever. Those six to eight o'clock is like boring. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's why sometimes you can get in closer to eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and still catch the move because of how much it bounces. Full transparency. I was eight thirty. I was bobbing and weaving. My head was bobbing. I couldn't hang. I don't know. <laughs> I could listen. I could barely. I I made myself stay up to nine o'clock, but I I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but. But anyway, so it was successful. Like I said, just using that strategy that the gap down meant that it would turn around and go back. So I'm like, okay, we're going to see. But I'll keep practicing. And like I said, maybe I'll probably try to get 10 of them going, and then I will go from there. Yeah. I heard.
I do not, sir. I do not. Did you knock on the door? Okay. You broke up a little bit. You do not what, Tonger? I'm sorry, talking to a kiddo. Oh, no worries. Okay. <laughs> oh. To a child um, looking for food. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so I'm going to keep, like I said, I'm just going to, I'm, 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 I'm looking for gaps up to that gaps and fair value gap. That's where I'm going. So I use Tanza's gap down that it will go back up and I just use the fair value gap for it to go to. That's why I chose that first target. Um, I said, let me see if it'll go to this first target and, and it did. So you did it just now this morning with me coming up? No, so last night. Oh, just last night. Okay. Overnight, the overnight one. Gotcha. You know, yeah. these the, the ones is when school starts at like 7 15. So I won't, I don't get a chance to look at the market until I don't get a break till like after 11 o'clock. So I don't, I very, I like, you know, I get the notices of what the market may do when it first opened and or as uh, economic news come through, but I don't get a chance to look. Gotcha. It's more, it swings faster anyway. And like you said last night, yes, it was moving slow, but it also helped you with your patience. Like, well, I'm just going to get there. I can go to sleep and boom, there it is. You know, it's just easier um, yeah. to make that overnight trade to me. Right. It's, it's easier. Your day is done and all of that. Now, it came into this one, but it didn't close it out. I wonder, Tanza said, make it do it till next week. Tanza looks like it's doing it now. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's what it looks like to me. I don't know about you. It looks like it's doing it now. With that tweezer bottom, they could do one of those pullbacks and quick pullbacks and just spring back up with the next 15 minute candle and finish it out. See, see what I mean? <laughs> Let's see. It's going to go up or down first before I hop in like a crazy person. And scout the next few handles up if you're going to push it up. This is where I get risky. This is just cool it, Randy. <laughs> just cool it, take the run down. <clears throat> I'm going to cool it and take the run down. Because <laughs> what it could do is it could stop me out right here, even though I wanted to go to 423 come back down again before it could get real interesting right here it, it just depends on how it wants to do it and the wicks and stuff but i ain't gonna lie like it looks like it's just ready to take it take it <laughs> just gonna just do it uh because it's just so much volatility in the market so much Come up and close it all the way a little bit further. And then these lows are getting lower. Okay, so let's do a, um, it's 1101. So let's do like a quick, since I still got most of y'all here, um, kind of like overview of what we can kind of expect now that this move is done, looking at all the levels and lines and saying that it's Friday, We'll do that little added piece of education um, because we won't be here on Sunday. If I'm not mistaken, I have shit on Sunday. I'll fill you up in the next Sunday. We'll be back for charting. So let's get into it. All right. So basically from here, we can still watch it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll get my money instead of all the rest of today if I really want to do it. I'm going to get up and walk the dog, take a break, come back, woo-saw. All right. So what we have in here, we have a weekly gap that was closed. So let's come out to the weekly view and do a top-down analysis, okay? Let's actually clear off Fibonacci. Let's Actually, let's clear it. Let's clear some of this. I don't want to clear all of it because... uh. But I'm out of trades. I'm out of my trades, so I don't really have anything to worry about. We'll remove highs and lows from yesterday and all that. We'll remove all these extra lines, and we will keep 
my overall support levels that I was indicating out. So, all right. So there was a daily fair value gap down in this area. I'm on the weekly though. So first there was a weekly, let me show you where I got these lines from. Recap and figure out what, what's going to happen next week. So price is coming down. You have my weekly fair value gap open to the top all the way up here. All right, price has closed this weekly gap. So if anything, now that it's closed, we could get rid of it. But as you can see, price was moving around within this level. So I'm not going to move it just yet. Then we have the weekly support acknowledging this lower candle break here in the breakout to the upside. Okay, so this is my support weekly support block from the weekly. Then I came into the daily to get all these dash levels. And on the daily, we had a, we had about earlier this week, or see, here we go, here it is. So we still have the daily fair value gap sitting here. It's still illuminated, right? Even though I knew we came through it all the way, I squared it off with um, some lines. I just took a horizontal line and marked it differently. Daily fair value gap open. And here's the close at the bottom here, all green because it's all support. All right. So then um, let's take this alert off. No, wrong button, maybe. Delete. Yes. Okay. So there's a close. So we knew it was going to come down and eventually test the close of this and try to close it out. Um, then I made a support zone. Basically, I probably moved this line a little bit, but this candle dipped down here, right? Where it comes further down into, here's the base of this, the top of this candle and then to the end <clears throat> of the breakaway candle, just the bottom of it, because price will usually bounce right at that bottom of this candle. So this made my like support, daily support zone, which was just a little bit further down from the daily fair value gap. All right. Now, as you can see what happened this week, right? Price did come down into the daily fair value gap to close it, right? Because it was already in it. We closed it with some wick. We haven't put a body through it yet. But then we also tipped into the daily support zone, right? Almost down to where we closed the bottom of that candle, but didn't quite make it. Right. So that is all levels that I want to see do. And this is how price looks on the daily from that. It was bouncing off the support like crazy. Pretty much at every line, there's a bounce. <laughs> all right. So we're sitting at the in between the daily fair value gap. We're trying to close it with a body, but we still have some wicks left. All right. And then we also are pushing back up into the weekly gap that we came down through. So we're we're fooling around at this line, basically. We're just struggling in between these two areas because they're significant areas of support, right? So now when I come to the two hour, I'm taking these levels of support and I'm drawing Fibonacci overlapping it uh, to get an idea of where price is gonna retrace to next. So at first, when I first drew it, I had it drawn from the swing high up here, these wicks, all the way to the swing low down these wicks. But since we now are becoming in a very choppy zone that I noticed after we came up, retraced down and made this pattern, I decided to make now this level my low and this up to this, this was my most recent high wick, all right, until earlier this morning, my swing high, right? And so this is where I have now the Fibonacci that you guys came into this morning and where price is going to go, right? So price came all the way through with the news this morning. So it had to come back up because it struck down too many levels of Fibonacci at one time. So usually when it does that, it comes back up. It did it yesterday. It came down too many levels at one time. It came back up. This one, it did even more levels. So it was bound to come back up. And now this is an order block that we could pierce through because the 4313 is the top of this candle level here, this long wick that I was expecting it to take out quite a few times now, but it's definitely been beating up against this line. And so this is where I got the 4313 at, right, for you to come up. 
And then um, Surprise could break and finish that today if it wants to do some extravagant shit on today, this Friday. That would be wonderful. Um, Because I can get back in here and take it up 13 more handles. And then if not, if it just wants to pool around here and make another turnaround level down, that's what I said, I could wait for the retracement to see what it's going to do. So I got to put an alert on this weekly gap line, especially since it's right at this level, this previous high. I can stick an alert there, see how it's going to break. It looks like it's going to do it now and see if I can take it back up and continue riding it up to my 43.13 so it can finish out this candle. Right, and now we'll be coming into this next order block. Right. So it's just a question of if it wants to do that. And that will be it blowing through the um the zero percent onward to going to the negative 50%, but it may not make it because it can wick right outside of the zero. And that wick right outside looks like it's gonna align with the 4313. All right. And then from there, you have the order block up. We don't have any fair value gaps down. So this may be another level of support and it may come now up and we have an impulsive move to take out some of this liquidity that was left behind up here. So that could happen into next week as it starts out as a slow week. It's just kind of like a slow liquidity grab, depending on how these candles close this Friday. You know, it all depends on how much the rotation is going to be back and then like what pattern that you're going to have in order to kind of know is it trying to still continue up right so these are what you're going to be looking at into next week with forex factory red folder starting on wednesday so we may have exactly that just some basic liquidity grabs from the two hour 15 minute with all this run up and run down is that a bear flag pattern the one that you were um, just showing on the two hour, potentially, if it runs back up here and swipes up some more liquidity, it could come back down with some vengeance. I don't, I think it needs to come back up a little bit more, me personally, because we've been down for such a bit. And, mm -hmm. we just, and if you look on the daily, like coming back up into this order block here from a daily perspective, I think we can, I think we have more room to come up. Got it. Because where's the neckline of this downward? This thing? drop, this bigger drop. Yeah, from the other side, where's the neck line? How far down? Oh, I see. The, is that is that the, the, the dotted lines that you have, the broken lines? Yeah, down? so the 43, 83 is the highest it could probably go back up to. And then coming down to the bottom to test further low is going to be like the 4208, which is, you know. Low. So just a matter of how it wants to go in this chop. Yeah. Right. That's the question right now. Okay. So with this W2, that's kind of not really a W, but we have a, a support level, another support level. So with it climbing like that, we do would have the strength to break through this. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like we can do it. Um because the lows are getting higher. So this is a moment of truth on reversal. And then if we don't get a reversal pattern, then we should be continuing up to the 4313 for the day. <clears throat> it'll break through. It just needs to make the pattern do so. Is anyone doing any afternoon trading? I mean, because this looks juicy as hell. I ain't gonna last another 13 handles. <laughs> I'm about to take it now if I do do it, because it's gonna take the rest of the day to come up here is what I'm thinking now. Um, because to fight through this, it looks like it may want it, man. Oh my God. I'd be mad if it turned around like right short shy of it, but I can always manage and get out. Because 47 minutes in the next two hour candle can continue up like straight, like straight up. <laughs> it just, it just do that. That's all I'm thinking. And it doesn't have to be really a turnaround at all the next two hour candle. So and these patterns are looking very bullish across all time frames. And then I can send an alert, another alert. When it comes to this fair value gap, I can take it up to 4302 
at the moment, see what it does right here, and then come back. It's a five minute. Come back and see if I can hold it through. Jump in now before I lose it. It's gone. It's doing it. <laughs> it is. I think I can potentially hold it through. Um, where the whole afternoon session is just green because it got so much momentum it fell all the way down <clears throat> so apparently it went all the way down and found some buyers that's what I'm thinking that's what I was expect, hoping it did and come back up for this 4313 god damn it because you've been playing with me all freaking week <laughs> so I'm going to see what happens at this, this fair value gap on the 15 minute the small one it's already wicked through but that just shows it's weak so it can keep coming through some more because the morning volatility is done now it's like pick a direction damn it and i just see you just keep coming up it's just might as well you're just like right there here are just you're just right there <laughs> so that could just be my over hopeful, but that's why I do have an alert here and I will get out and call it quits if I can't get it to come up anymore. I ain't that crazy now. Let's see, it's already doing a pullback. It can still do a deeper one too. To, let me do another line. Okay, so this is the first one. I'm not worried about that one because I'm I won't mind if that one goes, but if this lower one goes and you want to get out of dodge. Because it's expected for the one right below to potentially get hit with it. Uh, what I'm trying to say. Close a fair value gap. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what, do, what, do, what do I mean? What do I say? What do I mean? The fair value gap is on the, on the two hour? No, nah, this was a three minute one because I'm trying to keep things tight to get out. So I'm back yep. and going up. We'll see what happens at 43 or one if I get a turnaround or if I get more bullish candles if I get more bullish candles and I think we can push through to 4313 I will move my next level up to 4305 just to see and just kind of watch it do its thing so, okay. yeah, I expect it to come down to see now on the 15 minute that level that I put on the three minute aligns with it closing this fair value gap all the way pretty much, which would be an expected move. And if the, the thing is, if it breaks it, it's when you don't want to hold it. Right. Everything I do is off a candlestick. So sometimes it could push you out of your, your risk tolerance. So you need to like trade according to the risk tolerance aligning with the candlesticks the best you can. Because you see it, you see it, you see this next candle forming, you are, it's more likely to try to take out some of that liquidity and not have it there, but that doesn't mean prices don't fall. That just means it's trying to get some out some of the liquidity so it can continue to go up. Um, so it's really a matter of if it breaks this level and comes down into this step. But this is usually a strong run-up type pattern, so they should just keep pushing a bit. <clears throat> just a little bit more. You got it in you. You can do this. All right. I would love to let y'all go, but I'm addicted. So I'm gonna be sitting here. It's a matter of like y'all can just peace <laughs> out. Um so what happened, Kim? You okay over there? Uh I was I meant to get out of an order and I went to go put a load of clothes in the um wash and forgot to get out. So now I got two puts that are losing, but the one I should have got out this morning, I didn't. Yeah. But now I got into another one on my cash account. So I'm, I think I'm going to buy another one uh, after it gets up to like 426. If it starts to go down, I'm going to buy another one because it's in my cash account. Damn. Yeah, I blew that one. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to get out of that order. So try to set your take profits um, right after you get in. 
Well, the one didn't meet my target. That's why I didn't get out, which I thought it would have got out overnight because it went all the way down, but it didn't. Um, <clears throat> so even when I was up, like I was up like $30, $40. Now I'm down 186 on that one. Okay. Just in today. <laughs> um, and then this other one I just got in, I'm down 67. But I got out of one that I made probably about $100 on, on the call. It hit my target, so I got out. So I don't be doing that take profit. So you do take profit, but you were on a desktop, right? Yes, I do trade, take the most of my trades on desktop. Now at night, I'm on my phone, but I, I mean, I always, because I am trading the futures a bit more now, my spy stuff I do in the morning at the desktop because that's all I care about is that morning move. And then I'm out. I don't care for any more options. The rest of the day, I'm trading in futures because I can I can do it from my phone easier because I don't have to do that additional calculation. I can just. I'm wondering if it wants levels. to fill this gap on spy. It filled it. It more than filled it. No, there's a gap on a daily from four twenty six sixty two to four twenty five oh six. When did I have that gap done? Yeah. What that gap happened, happened on October the 3rd and October the 2nd. It's a and daily This is the gap that I was thinking it would come up and finish, and it's been taking this dog on time. It's stuck between two gaps. This is aligns with, it aligns with um, price coming up to 43.13 which is this two hour candle is driving me nuts because I know this candle got to get taken out. I can't believe it did all this dropping, but it is a volatile week that really annoyed me <laughs> because I really, I was looking at so many candles that were saying you were going to do it but because of the volatility week. It was like, oh no, we have red poles in the morning. So we're going to pull back all the way down here first. And then we're going to come. It's just frustrating. So like, uh, and this is the thing with Tanda saying too, that it may not do this today. I want it to, of course, but it may not. But it also may just take it all day. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. And just finish out the week like you're supposed to for the rest of us traders. Tanza. Like, That's what I want to put into the market right now. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, that's that gap. Because see, look, look at it on the, on the spy. It's the same thing. It needs to come back up to this candle. Bag nab it, fling flab it, just do the down <laughs> <laughs> this is how I feel. So let me just take the rest of the day because then that candle will close on the daily. That will make this candle close up here, which would just get rid of, which would be a test into the uh, daily order block, which would be ideal to close up some of the liquidity. Like that's just, I've been saw that move. That's how I'm looking at it. So it's like, you got to come back up there to do something to some extent. Now, why you want to play games? I don't know. Take a couple days. I don't know. It's just short candle, whatever. But you're going to come up through here at some point. And there's nothing wrong with you doing it today. You can move another two more dollars today. All right. I'm off my high, high eyelash with this. Uh, it, okay, so... Any other questions, concerns for this for today's session, guys? I'll let you guys go and have a great weekend. I think I covered pretty much everything. Um, save trading for the afternoon. We'll keep pick it back up in the Telegram chat. Excuse me. Y'all have a blessed one, and I see you all Monday morning. Bye.